The new fast-paced, fun, and exciting Alpha Clash TCG. I'm gonna show you how to play this online with friends through the tabletop simulator. Now, this is a perfect way to get acclimated to the game, experiment with a bunch of different decks. So we're gonna go over how to set up tabletop simulator on your computer, and then I'm gonna go over all the basic controls to get everything ready for you to jump in and play with a friend. Now, there is gonna be set to releasing in December. So this is a perfect opportunity to learn how to play on the TTS. Also through the channel, I plan to do some tournaments coming up through the TTS. So if you're interested in joining any of those, be sure you stay tuned. So now let's jump in. If I forget anything when I'm doing this video, please let me know in the comments if I forget about any of the major controls or anything like that. If you found the video helpful, be sure you hit the thumbs up on your way out and let's get started. So now the first thing you're gonna need, well, it's a PC. Obviously, if you don't have a PC, it's gonna be a little bit harder to do this, but you also need Steam. And so if you don't have Steam yet, you can make a free account, log on to Steam, go on to the Steam store and just search the Steam store for Tabletop Simulator and it should pop up at the top. Now the TTS is $20 in the Steam store, but you can play literally thousands of different types of board games, card games, all sorts of stuff. So it's not just an Alpha Clash exclusive, you can play all sorts of things on the TTS already. And some people even have the TTS. So this is gonna be free for you. Now, once you have the TTS installed, you're gonna go over to the community tab. And now over in the community tab, you're gonna go over to the workshop tab. Now over in the workshop tab, you're just gonna search over here in the search bar and type in Alpha Clash. This is gonna let you search all the different games that are on the tabletop simulator and the very first one that you're going to see right here is going to be alpha clash now we already have it installed so you're just going to see this little plus symbol and you're just going to click the plus to install alpha clash now once we got that installed we're just going to click the play button to load it up we're going to play the tabletop simulator and start it. Now, while we're going through this, I'm gonna be dropping some very useful links. And the first one of those links is gonna be the link to the Alpha Clash Discord. Great community over there. And especially if you're looking for people to learn from and play with, I would certainly recommend going into the description, find the Discord link and go join. So now we can either create our own room or we could join an existing server. Now, if somebody already has a room created, like if you found somebody on Discord, that is where you're gonna go. You're gonna search the room name. Hopefully they give you a password and you're just gonna join through that. But we are going to create our own room just so we could show you how to do that in today's video. So we're gonna click create. You can do single player, multiplayer, hot seat. We are gonna do multiplayer. We are gonna just add a multiplayer room in which multiple people can join. We're just gonna name the room. You can do it public, friends, invite, however you wanna set your security settings. And then you have a server password, maximum players, create server. So like I said, this game is for a lot of other board games. So there's gonna be all sorts of stuff. And some people that have been playing the TTS for a really long time already have a bunch of different games on here. But since we downloaded Alpha Clash through the workshop, you're gonna see a little workshop tab here. And we're just gonna click the, uh, the workshop on Alpha Clash. We're gonna load the deck importer. So after the deck importer loads, you see that we have our game board here. We have everything that we need and nice labeled sections for you to put your cards and all that stuff. Now you can have, I don't know, eight to 10 people in the server at one time. Obviously, if you have that many, most of them are just observing. Or if we do a tournament style, we're going to have everybody watching at the same time. So lots of options with this. And it looks absolutely amazing. I love how each of the zones or each of the sections, uh, you can see exactly where the cards go and the art looks beautiful. So now the next thing we need, well, we need our decks. So that's going to be the next link that I'm going to drop in the description. I'm going to give you a link to the Alpha Clash website in which it lists a bunch of the community decks, a bunch of decks for you to choose from experiment and use in the TTS. Now you could just go through these, find the ones that you like and find the ones that you are interested in testing out and playing. And then once you do find whatever you want to do, you're gonna just go over here, hover over one of them and you're gonna see these little three dots. You're gonna click that 
and you're gonna copy the TTS code. Now, once you have the TTS code copied, you're gonna go to the bottom left down here and you're gonna see import deck. You're gonna go over here to where it has the little blank space and you're gonna control V. And once you control V, which just means paste, you copied it from the website, copied the deck from the website, you control V this, which is pasting, and then you're gonna click import deck, and then it's gonna populate the entire deck from the website. Now you're gonna do the same thing for the other deck. You're gonna find a different deck, or they're gonna find their own deck. They're gonna also import it, and it's gonna populate the deck for you. Now, if you did wanna check out the deck before you actually import it, all you have to do is just click it and click the deck from the website instead of hovering over it to get the TTS code. If you click it, it will go to the deck and you can look at all the cards in the deck. Now, just to note, some of these decks will have 10 cards as their side deck, you know, used for tournaments. When you have multiple matches in a row, you could switch out those 10 cards. That will appear somewhat around this area right here. Now, if those 10 cards do, you know, do appear, just switch them out and take the deck that is have the 50 cards in it and you're going to put it over here and then just move the 10 cards over to the side. So now let's go over some basic controls. We have the game loaded. We have our board. We have our decks imported. Now, how do we actually play it? There's not going to be people or there's not going to be the actual game tell you what you can and can't do and the buttons and all that stuff. There is a, a drop down for you to see some of the controls, but it's not exact. But either way, um, first thing we're going to talk about is how to move cards. Well, you got to have your little grab up here on the top left. Just make sure that that is clicked. And if you hold down left click, you're going to be able to move the entire 50 card deck. Now, the deck goes over in the deck spot. The other card that is by itself, that is going to be your contender. We're gonna put that over in the contender zone. Now, by using the same process, you can move a single card from the top of the deck. You just have to move it quickly because if you want to grab the entire deck, you're gonna hold down a little bit longer and it's gonna jump up like that. So just do it a little bit quicker and you can move a single card from the top or hold it down and it'll move the entire deck. So we have our contender in our contender spot, but it does no good when the contender is upside down. So we need to know how to flip the card. Now flip the card is probably what you would intuitively think it would be. It is gonna be the key F. So now we got the contender, we have our 50 card deck. Now what we need to start dealing ourselves some cards. Well, before we could do that, we need to shuffle our deck because we don't know how the deck was imported or on the actual website. They could be in order. And before every match, you're going to want to shuffle. And so in order to shuffle your 50 card deck, you're just going to push the R key. And now the R key will shuffle any number of cards that are highlighted. Obviously, it can't shuffle one, so it does nothing under one card, but it will shuffle all 50 of these cards. So now we need to draw our eight cards to start the game. Now you have two options here. You can either push the numerical value eight or any other numerical value that will draw that many cards into your hand. So if you only want two cards, you can just push the two key and it will draw you two cards, or you could push eight, or you can right click, scroll down here to draw, and this will draw you a single card in your deck, and you could click this eight times. One thing I forgot to mention is up here at the top, they have two important options up here. Well, maybe not two important ones. One important one and one kind of a one for preference is gonna be the lift weight. This is gonna tell you how much to lift the card up on the table. So if you want the card to be lifted really high so you know that you're actually selecting it, you go all the way to the top. If you don't really care and don't really matter how high you lift it, you could put it all the way on the bottom. And so just by pushing it, you can see that it's kind of high. If you go all the way to the top, it's really high. And then if you go all the way to the bottom, it is pretty low. And so you could change your lift height. Another important one is gonna be the rotational degrees, 15, 30, 45, 60, or 90. You're gonna to wanna to set this 
to 90 because we need to engage the cards, we need to rotate the cards, and it's easiest to rotate rotate them in 90 degree intervals. Now the next thing we're gonna do when we start the game, well, we're gonna play a resource card. Now, like I said, I'm not gonna go over all the rules and stuff, I'm just kind of doing this in the process in which you would play the game. And so uh, we need to play a resource card first. We got eight cards. The text is really small from you know where we're sitting right now. So if we if you don't know the cards, if you don't know what each of the cards do, you need to see the text. You can click the Alt key, and that is going to zoom it in for you. So any of the cards that you want to get a closer look at, just hover over them, and you're going to click the alt button. So now once you decided what card you're going to play in the resource zone, you're going to find the card that you want and you're going to hover over it. You're going to grab it and you're going to place it in the resource zone. Now you want to place the resource card upside down. Now in order to do that, we need to rotate the card. Now in order to rotate the card or any number of cards, you're going to scroll over it or hover over it and click either the E button or the E key and the Q key. So the E and the Q will rotate it clockwise and counterclockwise. Now, like I said, you could do this with whatever you're hovering over. So even if you have all 42 cards left in your deck, you can do that, or you can do one single card. You can do anything that you are hovering over with E and Q key. Now there will be many times during the game in which you need to use multiple resources to play a card. So for example, we have here comes the boom. Deal five damage to all clash cards. An action, a basic action that you have to use during your primary phase. Now in order to do that, we need to use four resources. Now you can rotate each of these cards, which I mean, you could do, but there is an easy way to do it. If we go over here, we could, or at any point, you can click, drag, and it will highlight all four cards or whatever is in the box. All four of these cards are highlighted and you can rotate them all at once. Now there will be times where the game does last a little bit longer. You're gonna have tons of resources and it could spread out over the entire board down here. Well, in order to organize it maybe a little bit better, what we're gonna do is highlight all of these resources right here. And they have a neat little feature where we could group them all together. So in order to group them or put them all into one pile. We're gonna click the G key. We do still need to see the resources though. So in order to kind of spread them out a little bit, you're gonna right click on the seven. You're gonna see spread cards out on the table. We're gonna click that and it's gonna spread them out. Now these are all nice and grouped and perfectly uh, spaced out lots of extra room and so with this you could do the same exact thing now this obviously isn't necessary it's just like the ocd and me wanting everything to be a little nice neat and clean when i'm looking at it and so this is a pretty easy way to group them all together and get them all perfectly aligned and all that stuff another thing you do during the game as well you're gonna be playing traps now these traps you lay on the accessory zone and you lay them face down, which means you don't want your opponent to know what traps you have. And so we are gonna lay a trap right here. Now this is a counter attack trap. And so if we flip it, put it over face down, and we know that it's gonna go in the accessory zone, we're gonna put it down here face down so the opponent cannot see. A few turns later, you actually forgot what your card was or what your trap was. And so you can view that card by clicking the Alt Shift key. And so once you scroll over it, remember we hit Alt to zoom in on it. And then we're gonna hit Shift and it's gonna flip it over. Now your opponent will not see this they're gonna see a little eyeball, which means that you're looking at it, but you can see what the card is and just remind you uh, when it's face down. Another thing I forgot to throw in there as I'm doing this, I'm remembering things along the way. Before we did all of this, we needed to decide who was gonna go first. And best place to do that, well, we have dice here. Now you could pick any number of these dice. Uh, we like to go with the 21, you know, 20-sided dice or whatever. 
And so you just hover over it as grab and you just shake it around a little bit and throw it along the table. And so we're gonna land on a one, that's nice. Throw it the other way and each opponent or your opponent, you and your opponent can decide who goes first. Now, like I said, you can use any of these dice. It doesn't matter which one that you use. And so as long as you have one that you can determine, you know, who has the higher number, who's gonna go first, to put them up, again, you just grab them and you go over to whatever one they came in and you just pick them up and then drop them back into the bag. Now there will be times when you're allowed to take the top however many cards from your deck and look at them and be able to take one of those cards and put them in your hand or put it on the board. You do not want your opponent to see these. So kind of the same thing that we did with the trap. If you take off single cards, you know, by left clicking and then dragging a little quick left click and drag, you go over to any one of the cards, you click alt, you click shift, and then you just scroll from left to right and you'll be able to see what the cards are without your opponent being able to see. And then you're gonna decide which one that you want to have and then you're just gonna drag it over to your deck. Now you do have three cards here. So just like we did before with the resource zone, we click and drag. It's gonna highlight all of them together and we want them to be all neat and nice and tidy. We click the G key that is gonna group them all. A lot of times it either says put them in oblivion or put them at the bottom of your deck. If it's at the bottom of your deck, just pick up the deck by holding down left click for a little bit longer, set it on top, they're gonna group them together and then just put the deck back where it was. There could be at some point in which, depending on your deck and your cards and stuff like that, that you have multiple things attached to a class card like weapons or something like that. Uh, if you have all of those and you need to move them or attack, obviously you're gonna click, drag, highlight, pick them up and then you can move them wherever you're going to attack. Now let's say that we just had a clash. We ended up losing the clash, which means we lost all of these cards. So kind of the same thing. All these cards go into oblivion. You can do them individually one by one, but there's a faster way to do it. If you click, drag, of course you highlight them all. First thing you're gonna wanna do is group them together. Now, when you group them together, it's going to group them in the same orientation as each other. And so as you see, it rotated them for, for you, just depending on the cards. Sometimes the orientation, if there's like more cards that are facing upside down, it will um, put the card, you know, upside down or whatever, but they're always in the same orientation. So now that we have them all grouped together, we could just single picked up all three cards, place them in oblivion. Now, when we do clash damage, we obviously need to keep track of that. It has these little nice counters next to the board. And so a minus, a plus, and so you're just gonna click the minus buttons and the plus buttons whenever you get attacked or if you take clash damage, or your opponent is going to click the minus and the plus when they take clash damage. So a nice little easy way for you to keep track of your contender's health. Couple other options that I find pretty useful is going to be the ASDW key. Now, if you've played any games on PC in which you have to move a character, this is gonna be the same idea. It is ASD and W that is gonna let you move your viewpoint scrolling in and out, scroll wheel or mouse wheel up, mouse wheel down, that will let you zoom in and zoom out. Now, if you wanna rotate or tilt, you just click the arrow keys, up, down, left, and right for the arrow keys. That will let you rotate, that will let you go up, down on the tilt, or if you wanted to do that, or an easier way to do it, uh, kinda like a free, roam or free view, you right click and then you could just move your mouse around and that will let you zoom or that will let you tilt and turn the table. Another kind of useful key is going to be the tab key. Now this is for lines and measuring, but it kind of has a useful feature that I have found to be pretty cool. Uh, if you go over wherever you want to click something and click the tab key, you'll see that arrow bouncing up and down. 
So if you're playing with somebody and they, you know, are kind of unsure what you're talking about, or maybe your voice chat doesn't work or something like that, you can just scroll over to wherever you're at with your little mouse, click the tab button, just tap it once, and you'll see this little arrow bouncing up and down. And you could be like, I'm going to attack your contender, or I'm going to attack this guy over in the clash zone, or wherever you want to do, just click the tap. Another, I guess, quality of life, maybe you could say, is the scale button. That is going to be the plus and the minus keys. Now, if you click the plus and minus, you can scale each individual thing. Now, if you want to, I guess, at the very start before the game starts and you want to scale all of your cards to be bigger or to fit kind of exactly on here, you can just click the plus or the tab or the plus or the minus and that will scale all of the cards bigger or smaller. Another one that I forgot to mention when we were doing the free rotate or the free turn, if you are, I guess, not used to it and you kind of get stuck in a situation where you're like this and you can't really see anything, all you have to do is click the space bar key and that is gonna take you back to the home view. Now, when you are done with your game, if you wanna play another game, you know, if you just throw your contender over to the side, because obviously he's not gonna go into the pile of 50, we're gonna highlight all of these cards, all the cards that we have on the table. You see different orientations, some flipped down, some flipped up. We're gonna group them all together, and when you know it, bam, they are back in that 50 card deck. Now, if you mess up or do something that, I don't know, you can't figure out how to redo, they have this left arrow, which is rewind time up here at the top. They have left arrow, right arrow. If we just click the rewind time, it's gonna bring back time a certain designated amount. You can keep clicking it and it will take you back to whatever place that you were at when you messed up. A couple other miscellaneous keys is going to be the Z key. That is going to be the pan and zoom, I guess. And it just goes to a specific distance zoomed in and then it will pan it back out. You can also click the M key, which means magnify, kind of puts a magnifying glass on stuff. That key really isn't that helpful, obviously, because you have the alt, but it's still kind of neat. They also have the N key. N just means nudge. Like if you were to go up here and just push it out of the way. I mean, um, you wouldn't be able to do that to your opponents just depending on the roles that the owner of the room establishes for everybody. But uh, you can hit the N on yours, which is kind of neat. I mean, it just gives you a different thing that you can do with your cards. Not that it's that useful, but still kind of cool. If it does push the card out of the way, you can just go over here, grab it, and it does lock. I mean, it does have like grid locks to where it, if it falls or turned or whatever, and, it, and you put it in a specific spot, it will auto rotate and fix itself. Now, there are other things that you can do with this that you could experiment, like you can draw on the table, you can flick the cards, you can draw lines or measure things, but uh, I, I, you know none of those you really need. If you're curious about the keys, you can go over here to the menu spot and go over here to configuration and go over here to controls. Now, not all of the controls are exactly right. Like it does say raise for R. Well, that's not exactly right. That is going to be how to um, shuffle the deck when we have our cards here. And so it's not really raising them, it's shuffling them. So not all the keys are exactly right, but it still kind of gives you a reference. So now that the game is over and you know you want to play again, or maybe you don't and you just want to mic drop it, you know what? You could come over here. We could click the flip the table button and the game is over. Like, and just leave the room, my dude. I just flipped the table, I am done, I am out, I won. So now hopefully you know how to set up a game on the tabletop simulator, know all the important keys and functions on how to play the game. You might not know the rules of that, and that is gonna be the very last important link that I wanna leave in the description. I will leave a link for the full rule book. So now you know how to play the game, you know where to go to get the cards, you know what, you know, join the Discord and find people to even play with, and you know the rules as well. So hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure you hit that thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, 
Be sure you hit the subscribe button for more Alpha Clash content. Hopefully y'all have a good rest of your day and I'll see y'all next time. Y'all take it easy.